Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12 and this is Curse of Strahd. Uh, a building video. We've not done any for a little while. We keep getting distracted with all the automation stuff and the goodness of that. Um, there's no point in having all this wonderful automation stuff. We've got nothing to play. <laughs> so we are doing the late Lake Barot, uh, Baratok. There we go. Get it out. Um, we're doing that in this video. Now, if you're familiar with this scene, you're wondering what the heck have I done here. So this is the tower. It's also known as Van Richten's Tower. Um, or is it Kazim's, whatever his name is. Um, the Wizard's Tower, anyway. Um, but it is a multi-level tower. And of course, we have previously used levels for doing this stuff. I decided I would just do something different different just to show you a different technique um, because not everybody wants to use levels um, you know it's another mod to have in it's another mod to learn so this is another way that we can do this so all I've done is again we're using Aeon Bar's maps here I've just taken his maps for the ground floor the first floor the second floor and third floor or if you're an American, the first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor. Um, I've just taken those and just opened them, basically I opened them in paint and I slapped them together roughly next to each other uh, and slapped them in as one big scene. So I could have brought these in as separate tiles and just made my canvas really big and brought these in as tiles, but I decided to actually edit the image to include all four of them. So just the way I decided to do this, just for a bit of a change. And then I have gone through and I've gone to drawing tools and text and just put these boxes on here um, just so that I know what each one area is. And it's down as information um, because it's for information purposes. It doesn't need to be for anything else. Just checking they all did translate over. And of course, if I want to make sure these are hidden for the players, I can just toggle these off. Um, they don't necessarily need to be able to see those, but it does no harm if they can either. Um, so we need to do some building. Now the interesting thing is there's basically two major encounters in this, so this may not all be one video. First of all, when they very first approach, they need to deal with this wagon. So there's this encounter here um, to do with Esmeralda's wagon, and then we've got the tower itself. Uh, and on this map, the wagon is right outside the tower. Um, in the original module it kind of describes it as being a little bit further away you kind of encounter the wagon and then you move on to the tower but in, on this map they're, they're right next to each other and that does not matter so there's going to be a few interesting things we need to sort the wagon out we need to put walls in for everything of course as always um, and importantly, importantly um, we need to deal with some traps and bits like that that will come up but mostly this video is going to be the really exciting part that you all know and love, which is going to be doing things like putting in the walls. Now you can see I've already got the grid on and I've done that. Uh, and because of the way the maps are, the door here is centered in this wall of the tower. But we do have a lift in the middle. Uh, and I wasn't sure whether to line up with the door or line up with the lift. I've gone for lining up with the lift because I think when we get to the lift tile it's just going to make life easier for us. Um, so that's the ground floor uh, and as you can see um, we've got the first floor here and we've got that hole that the lift comes up but we've also got this ladder up the side with this walkway uh, that again goes down that side so that correlates with this ladder over here. Uh, and if we go to the third floor we can see that this other ladder also comes up here um, and shows that that comes up to this platform um, where we can come in but also we've got the lift shaft there and finally at the top there it does not appear to be any way to access this except by the lift um, so that's that's what we're looking at that's what we need to do so uh, yeah like I say in this one it's mostly going to be putting in some walls and exciting bits like that so we might as well crack on um, but I'm going to do something perhaps slightly odd is I'm going to wall off the wagon to start with um, for a very good reason well it might not be a good reason you can be the judge of that because I, I think I hesitate because I'm thinking on the fly <laughs> <laughs> as I do. Um, might bring that in a bit. 
I want them to be able to see the wagon but not be able to enter it. So um, we're going to make these walls here. We're going to make these invisible walls. So yes, restrict movement, but don't restrict light, don't restrict sight, don't restrict sound. Um, so effectively they're invisible. Um, just stops the players from walking over this. And by doing that, actually I can push this wall out a bit further. Because I just don't want them trampling all over the top of it and, you know, that'd be a bit weird, wouldn't it? Um, but there is, I'm going to put a door in. Let's bring this back a bit. Dear Lord. Come on, you can do... <laughs> this is not that difficult. What is wrong with me? Oh, dear. Right. And now that's not invisible. Oh, I don't know. I just don't get it. I mean, thankfully, you guys are watching this, and I'm sure you have exactly the same little silly little things, and you're just sitting there kind of going, <laughs> we know the feeling. <laughs> uh, this door is locked, and there is a trap associated with that. So when they try to enter the wagon, and in fact, I'm going to move that door back a bit, I think, so it's a bit more actually back of the wagon. Um, when they try to open the wagon, there's going to be a trap that goes off. Uh, and that is something we're going to have to... No, we're not going to have to. We can absolutely roleplay that. So let me let me read it for you. So essentially, if they break into the wagon, picking the lock, smashing the lock, um, they're going to set off a trap. Uh, Double-barreled traps. Um, vials of alchemist fire have been removed. So I'm reading the Dragna Carta version, the uh, Strahd Reloaded. Um, two heavy crossbow traps mounted on the far side of the cabin fire, targeting the player immediately front of the door, which is going to be pretty much anybody who opens that door who doesn't deliberately say that they're going to be standing to one side or, you know, expecting something to come flying out. One of them is a silver barbed net. So it's a range attack, uh, which does piercing damage on a hit, um, but they also have to make a saving throw to try and free themselves of it. Uh, and they remain restrained until they do manage to make that saving throw. So that could be interesting. We can make that as an actual an actor in the wagon of the crossbow and give it that, um, that attack ability. Uh, also, bottle of concentrated alchemist fire, a ranged weapon attack, plus eight to hit again, does a whole bunch of fire damage. So on hit, the target is also set ablaze and takes the damage again at the start of its turn. So some unlucky git potentially is going to open that door. They're going to get shot by a silver barbed net. They're going to take damage. They're going to be restrained. They're also going to be hit by a bottle of concentrated alchemist fire and set on fire. And even though there's water quite nearby, one, it's alchemist fire, and two, they're restrained by a net. I mean, it's really potentially very nasty. Um, and obviously the party is going to have to rally to try and save that individual. Um, before they can even get in there. So we, we'll need to sort that out. Now, hopefully, with a bit more um, professionalism, uh, we can do the rest of this tower. So let's put in this door here first. Uh, get, that, get that out of the way. Um, and now we can put in normal walls um, that we can just put in. In fact, actually, look at that. We can snap it to that grid there quite neatly. Uh, now, yeah, I've got my grid on, and it's red, because that's how I do it. Just thinking, I'm just going to change the way that is a little bit. Um, go on, go on, you can do it. There we go. <laughs> the struggle is real. Um, oh, I forgot what I was saying. Um, yes, I've got my grid on. So I always make my grid red, especially for you guys on the video. So it's much easier to see when I'm lining stuff up and things like that. And then I will then turn that grid, uh, not turn the grid off, but make it transparent so that the players don't need, they don't need to see the grid. Okay, at no point do they need to be able to see the grid. Really, if they particularly want to see the grid for a particular combat or something, it's really easy. I'm literally just going to go, oh, hang on a minute. There we go. And I can put that grid up again, like that. Yeah, but normally I would have that completely off. I'm going to leave it on just while we're doing the building bit here. Okay, so this is walled. That's that's kind of all we need to do here. Now we have got a ladder. 
but that is actually going to now if we were using levels then we would just put in a little thing there where you step on the thing and it goes up the ladder but we haven't got that so we're going to be doing it a different way for this partly because i'm fed up of just doing them all the same way um, but also show you other techniques as well because i know not everybody is that uh, familiar with it so um if we tread on this square here let's put in an active tile for this so we can put this in here yeah uh, we don't need to put an image on it that's absolutely fine but we could do if we wanted to and we could just call it ladder okay now we are going to want to use tagger for this so we're going to call this um, I'm just trying to think make sure let's call it Baratok Ladder 1. I'm imaginative, huh? <laughs> so that's we're going to have that as a trigger. We're, we're going to come back to that when we get to the next section. All right. Um, in fact, actually, I'm just going to make sure I've got that copied. All right. So for this floor here, we're going to want another one of those triggers, which is going to be here. Uh, I'm going to add tag here, and this is going to be number two. Okay, I'm going to add that one in. Um, and again, I'm just going to call this ladder, because it don't, doesn't matter that they're called the same. Uh, and now I'm going to put in a, another one over here. Now this one's slightly more awkward because it's on an angle. Let's, uh, let's get the things in first. Okay, we're going to call this ladder three. Uh, ladder put that in there uh, and the fact that that is not quite where we want it we can just hold shift and move that where we would like that to be okay so we can we don't have to snap to those tiles all right so this here this is ladder two okay so on this one up here we can look at our triggers and we can say anyone who enters this I've just deleted it <laughs> shut up um, anyone who enters it we could use I'm just checking to see if there's something manually activate I don't want that door trigger no you can either do stop within or click on it um, but I would want them to be close enough I think we're going to have anybody who enters it the actions are going to be uh, 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 T for teleport the token that enters it they're going to teleport to, guess what, that's why we're using our tag. They're going to teleport to number two. Okay, that's what we want them to do, only in this scene. That's that's it. We don't want them random, we, we want them centered, and we want to snap them to grid there. Um, animate canvas to pan, not worried about that because they're going to effectively teleport over there. Um, delete source token shouldn't be relevant because we're not deleting, we're not teleporting between scenes. Um, avoid tokens at destination. No, nope, they can all pile up on top of each other. I don't mind. It's just a bit of a giggle really when that happens. So let's do that. Now we need an actor to test this. Uh, anybody will do. Olwen, thank you for volunteering. <laughs> Not that you did. Um, I haven't done vision for this scene. Olwen, I'm just going to take the mickey and keep repeatedly lighting your torch for you. Um, I will. She's supposed to have five. She's got one actually active in the game, so I will deal with that. So when Olwen comes to this ladder and steps on it, she should teleport here. Yeah, see what we've done? So she's now on the first floor. Uh, it's that simple. It really is that simple. Now, it's not going to teleport back because I need to look at this one. Uh, and again, for triggers anyone who enters this and the actions are going to be exactly the same well not exactly the same but the same process we're going to teleport that person and we're going to teleport them to back to number one yeah so and snap them to grid just so they land there now if we animate canvas pan it will zoom from one bit of the map to the other and will move across in fact, let me show you on this one, although I don't want that effect for this. Right, okay, so that should work nicely. We should, uh, and it panned really quickly, but it, it did pan. 
oh yeah it's just it is panning but very quickly and that's how i'd want it because i don't want them to kind of bit drawn all over the entire scene and everything else now what i do need to be wary of is if i on this scene if i put on if i put on global illumination the players are going to see these ugly joins between the maps yeah i don't want them to see that i don't want them to go oh look we can see what's going on over here um before we get there so another thing i need to do just down here a couple of things one i'm gonna i'm just gonna make that invisible that tile and i don't need to put an image on it yeah i don't need to um it's fine it's just will work like that but what i do want to do is i want to add a wall in and i'm going to do that wall from here Badly, apparently, as always. In fact, actually, I can do it all the way across. Let's zoom in. That is close enough. I don't really like that gap there. So this end, we're just going to move it up slightly. There we go. So now there's a wall there. They won't be able to see from that map to down here. But of course they can see across wise. So we're going to do that again. Um, and already I can see that I need to move my little label up there. Now it doesn't matter about... We don't need to wall off over around these edges. Because that's off canvas. And if it's off canvas, the players can't see that anyway. But for these ones... On the canvas itself there we go and that's just going to stop that ability you can see that I clearly need to grab my little text boxes and move them in Thank you very much just shift those over a bit uh, and that's because I put them on before I fiddled with the grid and I moved the grid slightly so they all shunted over towards the left okay so with those in now when we look at people like um, this you can see this character can actually only see this bit these bits are darker okay so this character cannot see beyond those so it's just a nice little way of walling off so the character's experience is they are only able to see this part of the canvas until they move level when they move level then it well we've just seen that haven't we when, when we move level they can now only see this um, and in fact we've got our because we've got walls on we've got all of our lighting working as we want to which is perfect all right, so teleport back over here because we've done actually that first floor. Now let's do something slightly different. I'm going to get rid of that one because we should, and I I don't use this, so if this goes wrong, you're welcome to laugh at me in the comments. I know you probably will anyway, so <laughs> it just makes me feel better if I've, if I've given you permission, right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to draw a region here. Let's call this uh, ladder. All right, now what we should be able to do, I'm going to use my tagger, and this was number three, so let's make sure we have our tagger in there for this. Now, for those of you who are watching, kind of go, what's tagger about? Um, all of these entities, these tiles, have a randomly generated ridiculous name. Um, so if you copy it to another scene, or you try and package it and give it to somebody else or something, Foundry will reassign that tile a completely random new number. So when you've got tiles trying to talk to each other, it can't find they can't find each other anymore. What tagger does is say actually this tile will always have that tag. Uh, Baratok ladder three. It will always have that tag. So even if that other one changes, it's not worried about the, the foundry name for it it's going to be looking for the tag not the foundry name and that won't change so that's what tag is for if that didn't make sense um we have got a video in the playlist where we looked at tagger um but try it without tagger um and it, when you get stuck come running back to tagger okay so <laughs> we've we've built uh, it's, it's a little bit large isn't it this um I made, I made this a bit larger than I need it to be. Oh, um, hang on a minute. Now we've got tons of shapes. Ah, uh, start again, start again. I'm too busy yakking. All right, let's create a new region. Let's make it. Let's actually let's make it free form. 
We're going to make it there. That'll do. Okay, we're going to call this ladder. Uh, we don't care about the colour because the players aren't going to see it. I need to put that tag back in. This was number three. Add that tag. Um, and that's all we're going to do with this at this point. But we will be looking at behaviours. And the behaviour we're going to choose in here is teleport token. So we can do that with monks active tile tokens with the mat. We've just done it. You've just seen that happen. But we can do it with regions as well. So we're going to include that. It's now going to say, but where are you going to? Now see this destination. Yeah, this is the um, this is where we put in a really weird long number and everything else. But you can also see it says drop region. So regions talks to regions much, much better. So let's just leave that as broken. What is... What's that region? Empty. Let's get rid of it. Okay, so if they go up this ladder, where does that take them? That takes them to up here. So let's draw in another region up here then. Oop. Okay, so this is going to be... Uh, we have to... Because I'm sure we named that other ladder, that other region ladder. Let's call uh, ladder three. Oh, this is going to get confusing because this is actually number four, isn't it? Let's call that ladder four. All right. So add that tag on for us. Um, we've got our shape. We don't need to do anything that. But what we do want is a behavior here. And this behavior, I'm going to leave blank. Bear with me. Let's go back to this one. Bet down here. <laughs> back to this one. This is the only reason why the colour regions are useful is when you for some reason manage to not put words on properly. Ladder, so this is ladder 3. Obviously I didn't save it because that should be tag that token on there. There we go. Update region. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to edit this region. That behaviour, teleport token. What we wanted that to do is we want to teleport it to the other region. Now I should be able to tell it which region. Uh, the destination region of the token is teleported once it's moved into the region. Do I just put that? I've not done it this way, so we're just doing it. Does it take us to ladder four? Is that what we want? It's accepted it. It's not given us grief. What's this option? Allow the user that moved the token to choose whether to teleport it. That sounds like a nice idea. It's it's not saved that, has it? It hasn't saved that. So if I open this region, can you see this top box here? Copy document UUID. Click that. And then I can paste that in there. Okay. You're going to save it this time? It don't want to save it, does it? Copy that. That's why. Right. Need to, right, okay. So <laughs> I've not played with using, because mats work so well. I've not really played with doing it this way. So if you miss what happened there, I on the destination tile, I copied the UUID, so the unique whatever it is um, identifier from there. I pasted it into here. Then I clicked add document. Okay, so you put the link in there, add document, and you just above there, it now says ladder four. So it should take to that region. Now if we save that, just check that it's saved it. It has, it still says level 4. Thank you very much. Update that region. Get rid of it. Now where is our character, our actor? Let's see if this works as it's supposed to. Do I want to teleport Olwen to Ladder 4 in E6 Lake Baratok? Yes, I do. That I like. The fact that it asks them if they... Do, do you want to go up the ladder? Yeah? I mean, 
it'd be nice if we could change that wording, wouldn't it? To actually say ascend to, you know, ascend to whatever this is, ascend to the second floor. But it kind of doesn't allow us to do that. But it does mean we can look at those region names and say, well, hang on a minute. I want to change that region name because if I call this tower was it third floor that's probably going to look an awful lot nicer yeah have I done the right one have I this is second floor <laughs> right and I know some of you say that actually you really enjoy these videos where I'm just messing around and getting it wrong because it helps you guys learn and, and I get that I really do as much as it's sometimes slightly humiliating for myself all right so here we're going to teleport the token that's the behavior uh, teleport token we want to Ah, go to the other one now. If I've got this right, we want to go back to the blue one. So we're going to paste that in there, then click Add Document Ladder 3. Allow Choice, Update, Update, close that. Fingers crossed. I got something wrong, didn't I? I've got my regions confused. Regions, thank you. So the orange one, I want to go to the blue one. Let's change this blue one name while we're here as well. So this is first floor, okay? So tower first floor. So let's do that. We've already got our tag in there, that's fine. Let's update that, tower first floor our shapes fine we've got that tower second floor is where it's going that's all good we know it works that way this one should be teleport to tower first floor which is where we are right now allow choice yes correct it is enabled so why did that not work oh there we go there we go back down right brilliant so we can go you have to actually leave the region and come back into it there we go so if you don't go far enough out there we go so we've got two different ways of doing it we've got monks doing it which was really straightforward because i've used monks loads and loads and loads for stuff like this or we can do that using regions now the only difference really is the regions one is a bit nicer from the point of view it asks you do you want to teleport Olwen to tower second floor and then it says that we're in this scene E6 Lake Baratok which yeah I don't really want but there we go all right well that's nice so you can have a look at those and you can decide which of those you think is the nicer way of doing it I've got a, a, a surprised slightly surprising feeling that I like the regions one better because sometimes I, like, I know I just want to stand at the top of the ladder I don't want to get down it Whereas monks, yes, of course you can get it to ask that question, you know, but it might require scripting and things. Regions is doing that automatically. All right, we need to do walls. I need to carry on actually doing what I came here to do <laughs> uh, and build in these walls still. So you, you'll notice, of course, that uh, I'm leaving gaps for those windows. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do the map like this is yes I have got the cutaway part that allows me to just put in the small part of the tower for it but I wanted these maps that you can see the surroundings as well so if they are uh, if the party open windows look out of windows they can see the scenery they can look down on the wagon they can't get to the wagon without jumping out the window in which case they're going to be on the on the floor down aren't they um, there we go me and my inability to click it's tragic tragic I tell you 
Now one thing you will notice is so far we haven't done the keep weather effects out regions either uh, and that's partly because I wanted to do this first. I've missed a window. There we go. So that one's in there. Now on this walkway um, do we want to worry about them walking off the edge? Because at the moment they can just move their token off of there without falling. So I, I am going to put a wall in there. I'm going to put an invisible wall in just to stop them wandering off the edge there um, and just doing weird stuff really. So bring that round there, bring that round there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's an invisible wall. It's just to stop them moving their tokens in silly places. Um, and we can bring that down to there. And they should be able to walk around that without too much trouble. Um, bring that in there. But again, like all everything else, we, we, we can test it, can't we? You know, nice and easy, we can test that. Uh, where is Olwen? Okay, Olwen, so if we can go actually come out of the region. Thank you very much. Yes, we do. Olwen should be able to move around here. No, thank you. We should be able to move around here. Bosh, and then we're down to the ground floor where we don't need to worry about it. So that all works quite nicely. So we've got our walls in here. Um, we've got our walls up here, uh, which is fine. So now I'm going to do the weather mask region. And I wanted to get two done before I did this. Because normally we have, if we're using levels, we have one weather mask for everything indoors. But now we've got several locations that are indoors. And we can do that as a group. Yes, we can. Trust me on this one. Oh, I mean, I haven't done it yet, so maybe don't trust me until I've proved myself, right? <laughs> so I'm just going to call this weather mask. Okay, I uh, don't care what colour it is. Um, first of all, update that and make sure it saves. And then shapes. So here I'm going to say, hey, I want you to enclose there. Okay, add. That's now an indoor shape. But I can now also do add another region and then go, hey, add that too. Ooh. Which one did I just do? Yeah, do it that way. There we go. So now we've got that one as well. And we can also select, now I need to be careful not to get the walkway, that lot add another region. So all three of those regions, they're all green because they are all part of the same region even though they're separate. And then I can set behavior for those regions, all of them together. Now one of the things I am going to do is adjust darkness level. I won't always do that, but Cursor Strad, oh yeah, I'm doing it, definitely. Um, and we're going to darken by that amount. So that's one behavior I want to do. And the other behavior I want on there is, you've guessed it, suppress weather. Okay, brilliant, do that, update that region. Uh, there we go, and of course, if we now go to Lake Baratok, go to ambience and go weather effects, stick on all that fog. We've got our fog, but not indoors, not inside the wagon. Here, they're looking down on the wagon, so I'm happy for them to have fog over the wagon. Okay, that's not an issue at all. In fact, you could argue that we'd want fog for that. Not, not going to worry about it. Uh, we don't want fog limited there because that's actually outside. So a couple of different things we've done there then. Um, we've done multi-regions for our weather suppression that we don't normally do. And we've looked at using either Monk's Tractive Tile Triggers or the Regions Teleporter be really interested to know which you prefer out of Monk's Active Tile Triggers for the stairs and using the Regions one. Um, and um, if you're already doing this stuff, which which are you using? Just out of interest. Because I'm curious. Curious George, for those of you who are familiar with that program. Which I think is probably a, a lawful lot of you. <laughs> okay, so we need to just do the top of the tower now. Uh, badly of course because that's how we roll on this channel um, really badly <laughs> so badly I can start that again 
So um, I'm going to do from the end of that wall down to about there. Uh, and then it's because of the snapping. It's snapping in slightly unrequired places. It's got nothing to do with me being rubbish at mouse control. Oh dear lord. Doesn't always like moving when it's close to where you originally were. That's my pathetic excuse that I'm using. I'm using that my, as my excuse. You know what, damn it, I'm just going to do it all and then convert them to Windows afterwards. Because I'm too useless. And because it doesn't align to the grid, because of the funny tower, I can't just use snap to grid and... I was going to say cheat. Of course it's not cheating, it's just sensible. Um, but in this case I can't use that. No, nobody asked you to do another one. Come on, move in a bit because I would like these things to actually meet up properly. That's fine, that's fine. So window, 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 window. I'm holding now shift, just select those, double click, and then we can say movement, yes, light, none, sight, none. You absolutely can look over those. Now, of course, we can also, if we want to, is do the um, uh, is do the proximity threshold. And we can say, well, actually, if you're within a certain distance, um, sight, proximity, and we can say, if you're within 10 feet of it, absolutely, that's not a problem. You can see through it, other, you know, because windows and things, you can't always see if they're high or they're low or anything like that. Right, where is my... Go on, get back up there. Trundle all the way around the tower. Yep, up the ladder. Thank you very much. Uh, and this should be fine. And as I get close to those windows, I can see out. Okay. So if you weren't aware of that being a thing, it is nice and close to the window. I can see for miles. But if I'm further away from the window, my vision is limited. Now, I have got this great big hole in the middle of the floor that I'm falling through as well. So I need to do something with that, don't I? Okie dokie. So again, this is going to be an invisible wall, I think. I might come back and change that because I've got to put the actual lift in. Hmm, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that for now. Okay, I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, so I'm happy with this one. I'm happy with this one, except the fact that we've got fog indoors. So if we go to our regions, I go to our weather mask. Ooh, 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 ooh. Before I do that, because of the way the weather mask is going to want to work, uh, I want to put in a uh, ethereal wall. Okay, I'm going to put this in across there just to keep the fog out so this will no it won't restrict movement no it won't restrict light uh, no it won't restrict sight it won't restrict sound either which basically it's like well then it's a nothing isn't it because it's not actually restricting anything but it is giving me when I come into my shapes here and I say I want to um, <laughs> and I say that I want to uh, let me select all those walls thank you very much walls come on select all of those walls they should all be joined up when I go to add to that region there we go all right so while this is open to the elements we haven't got tons of fog inside here okay um, now it is a bit you know, no fog, fog, no fog, fog. It's a bit abrupt, but I think that's probably the best we're realistically going to be able to do. Okay, um, but yeah, we can we can walk through that wall. That's not a problem. Oh, it wants to teleport her downstairs. Uh, no. Oh, Gidoki. So we're nearly there, aren't we? Yeah, and we've done the hard graft, I think, um, because we're coming up to this ladder. I did it going down from the ladder as well. 
so that's no problem and from here there is no way to reach the roof part up here except using that lift bit in the middle so we don't need to worry about uh, another region teleporter I'm going to leave the monks teleporter and the region teleporter in for now uh, and just see what you guys say and see what you think what what you prefer on that um, and then I will uh, update it in the next video Maybe not based on those settings, but sometimes you guys come up with, oh, here's a reason I do it this way. And I think, oh, I never thought of that. That's a really good reason. And I want to change the way that I do it. So I'm going to wait for you guys to teach me how you do it and why you do it that way. So then I can make a more educated decision on how I want to do it. Because, you know, that's what this channel's all about, isn't it? It's about learning from each other. It's about, you know, learning how to enjoy Foundry, how to how to play the way we want to play, which is going to be different from other people's, of course, because the only one rule is if it's fun, you're doing it right. If it's not fun, you're doing it wrong. That That's it. And what is fun for one group or one DM is not going to be the same as for somebody else. Now, these walls are going all over the place, and I don't really care. <laughs> they function that's what matters they're not perfect and I know that drives some people nuts sometimes it drives me nuts too other times I just don't care and what you'll probably find is at some point between videos I'll go back and I'll fix all of those and I'll go nope it's annoying me I need to tighten it up so all of these are going to be windows uh, nearly missed one I got my. Uh, I'm sure my uh, my uh, my quality officer is uh, in the comments checking all of my walls, <laughs> making sure I haven't missed anything, because uh, I've always I always miss something every time, and it's like ah oh, you've missed that railing there. It's like damn it. <laughs> Okie dokie. I think I'm happy with those walls, um, and of course we just need to add it back into our weather masks. Okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to bring that up. Um, I'm going to select my walls here. And I'm going to add on, boop, there we go. And that's how you, that's a really good way of telling, make sure you've got all your gaps filled. Otherwise the regions goes weird. And there we go, fog disappeared instantly. So one region blocking all of our fog, no matter where it is. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Nice and easy to do. Um, as long as you can draw basic walls, which obviously for me is a bit of a challenge. Now, before I bring to the end of this video, um, like I said, there's quite a few other things to do with regard to what happens around the wagon, um, what happens in the tower itself, and there is a puzzle lock to get into the tower on the ground floor. So I'm going to need to have a look at that. And I was potentially going to do that on screen, but I think I need to at least play with it and go, I know how I'm going to attempt to tackle it before doing that on screen or otherwise it might just drive you guys mad um, and I won't get anywhere uh, and I know it's useful to watch people fumble because you learn from other people's fumbling I've spotted something I need to do um, but there's only so much of that you want to watch so uh, last thing very last thing is falling off of this walkway now that's lower down so I don't need to worry about that but what I do want to do is just put an invisible wall just to make it really clear come on and stop characters trying to jump off of there thinking oh I can walk from there onto that walkway they're going to go hang on a minute I can't it's like well you can if you jump um, and again worth just testing that yep you can't jump off if the player says well I'm going to jump it's like okay you do there you go because there's a DM, I can overrule that, of course. Um, but she's now stuck up. So. <laughs> okay. Could still reach the region. All right. So I'm going to call this one to an end. I hope that's um, shown you a few things that are interesting. A couple of different ways of doing it. Um, as always, I need to make sure that I've got my lighting working correctly on scenes like this. Uh, in other words, um, whether I've got global illumination on or not. And if I have what I want the general darkness level to be. So I can bring this whole thing down if it's night time, of course. Um, but uh, 
as most of it's outside, I do want some global illumination on. Uh, and of course, because it's got windows, there will be a certain amount of light inside. Anyway, I've just made it slightly darker inside. Um, in fact, you can see that quite clearly here, that inside looks just a bit more dingy and dark than the outside. There we go. Um, which I think I like that. I drop it by 0 0.2 for inside scenes. It's just enough to show that you're inside and it's not as bright. Um, but yeah, do it however you like. Anyway, thank you for watching. Do appreciate it. Um, please leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know about your regions versus monks active tile triggers for that teleporting stuff. What you think about it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do. It really helps out the channel. Let's me know that what we're doing is the right thing. And uh, I, it's... We've gone past the beginning of September and I must take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to the channel members, those people who have very generously uh, chosen to take membership um, and support this channel and keep it going. And most of the time, um, the, the little bits of money that I do get from making this channel, um, trust me, I spend more making this channel than I get from it, which is fine because that's my choice. Um, but I do tend to pump that back into people like Gambit and um, and Moto Moto and people like that who are doing work for us, you know, where we're requesting, can you help us with this? They're supporting me, supporting you. So that tends to be where I fund those. Uh, I, I, I funnel those funds and things. And of course, it does also enable me to do things like purchase adventures and stuff to be able to review and do things like that. We've not done a lot of that, but I do want to start doing that. House Divided is on the cards to do because I'm being nagged by one of the channel members. No, not nagged. That's unfair. It's been recommended by one of the channel members. And if you decided to take a uh, the, site, the second tier of channel membership, that means you can come along to the Discord, uh, come and play with us. Uh, some of the nonsense we get up to, but we do share a lot of stuff. We problem solve together. We look at how to make specialist items um, for very niche purposes. And we look a bit more under the hood at a few things like that. If you're interested in that kind of slightly more technical side. Um, but we also talk about all sorts of things that... Uh, a, a bit more gossip about what we like, what we don't like about the direction of Foundry and things like that. But of course, you are under zero obligation. And as I have always said, if you've only got a few pennies, I would much rather you spend them on content that supports your group and your fun than sending it in my direction or you support those modders because my job compared to their job is well easy. They are absolute legends, the lot of them. So um, yeah, if you want to support people, support them first and then if you've got anything left over and you would like to send it my way be much appreciated wow longest outro ever i'm out of here thank you very much guys take care i will see you in the next one thank you